Vader Cons! Back at it, guys, with another episode of Crusader Cons. And in this episode, guys, we're going to be talking about why does the Bible have contradictions? Now, if you're like a, a theologian, if you if you extensively studied the Bible for a good couple of years now, someone like this, this is like someone like Bart Ehrman. If you're like a scholarly person, like this person here, Bart Ehrman, and you spent a good chunk of your life reading the Bible, studying it, whatever. Yo, oh, guys, the Bible, guys, look at the Bible here, guys. As you can see, guys, the Bible's here and all these like, God damn, there's so much stuff in here, guys. There's so much to read, to comprehend. Oh, look, there is 1 Samuel 15, 3, where Yahweh Adonai tells the Israelites to genocide the Amalekites. And oh, look, we got 2 Kings 2, 2, 4, where Adonai tells... I guess it doesn't tell, but I guess Elijah complains about being insulted by kids for being bold. And then Adonai sends bears to maul to death these small children that insulted the prophet Elijah for being bold. And oh, look, there's so much in here, guys. There's so much blood, bloody atrocities and genocides and mass murders. And oh, look, guys, oh, damn, guys, look, there's something else. Oh damn, there's like more bloodshed in there. You want to call it the word of God verbatim, which is the Bible. The Bible is the word of God, supposedly. Now, one of the big conundrums here is that if the Bible is actually, as we as we come to understand it, is the word of God, literally the word of God, like it is like a divine source of authority and le legislation. The big issue here is why is the Bible so riddled with like issues, like prob like, like contradictions, contradictory accounts, like, like different pieces of information that don't go together. You can see some examples on the screen. For example, like Jesus in the Gospels, his lineage connect goes to different people. I've used that example so many different times in my previous videos, but it's such a good, easy to use example because it's not really easy to like, because it's like so straightforward. You can't really reconcile this type of contradiction that the, the Gospels present two different genealogies for Jesus. And that is like a very apparent contradiction that cannot be so easily reconciled. And there's various other issues like that. And if you go throughout the Bible, there's different like figures, accounts, and oh damn, there's like so many issues that are like, that if really, if this was the word of God, why would these issues even be present in the Bible to begin with? Why wouldn't the Bible just be flawless without any sort of like issues, contradictions, and etc.? And that's something that's like, so you must think about this carefully. Why does the Bible have contradictions, 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 contradictions? The Bible, not only does the Bible have contradictions, if you look at the manuscripts, like there's like, there's no one standard Bible. You know that there's like so many different versions of the Bible as well. The Bible, you got the Protestant Bible and there's like the King, there's like all these like King James Bible, the Catholic Bible, the Ethiopian Bible. There's all these different like collections of like books and the different parts and versions of the Bible. And that to me, would suggest that the Bible is like so flawed and so many, it's so like incoherent, it's so different regard, depending on what you, what you're looking in, looking at, depending on what you're reading. It's so like, it, it, guys, guys, this thingy here called the Bible, guys. Oh God damn guys, so much in here guys, so much wisdom and shit. And look, you can see like on the Bible that I have, you can see like these are special pictures guys, and, like, there's like maps and there's all this like insane shit. And look guys, look the land of Israel or Palestine or whatever you want to call it, guys. Look, first century uh, com of, of the common era. Look, Judea. And oh, look, all this dense history in here, guys. And this is the holy text for millions of people in the world, guys. And God damn, guys, look, the Holy Bible, guys. It's so God damn hard to comprehend it all. All within the scriptures here and the folds of history is great. I, I don't even know what to say. Look at all this stuff, guys. All the bloodshedding, the genocides, Noah's flood, God sending a worldwide flood to mass exterminate all life on earth. All here, guys, is quite mad. It's so mad. That's all written here, guys. Sorry, guys. My camera just got overheated a little bit, but we're back at it now with Crusader cunts. Why does the Bible have contradictions? Yo, I'm literally now on a website. It's called 101 Contradictions in the Bible. I might link this in the video description or in the comment section. Start, yo, this, this just goes through everything we really need. So super duper clear here. 
Literally, there's websites on Google that you can go on and they'll show you the, all the nitty gritty details about all the different sorts of contradictions in the Bible. So I don't need to like, kind of like break my jaw here, trying to articulate to you all the certain contradictions that you might come across in the Bible because there's websites that already clarify everything that you can go on for free of charge, no money needed to go on these websites. You can go on them and I'm on one of them right now. It's called 101 Contradictions in the Bible. This just goes through everything so properly and clearly. Who, you can like, there's one, there's like, con the first contradiction is who incited David to count the fighting men of Israel? And it says God did, 2 Samuel 24, 1. Satan did, first Chronicles, is that first Chronicles 2, 1, 1. In that count, how many fighting men were found in Israel? 800,000, 2 Samuel 24, 9. 1,100,000. You see guys, I'm just gonna show you more examples here. How many fighting men were found in Judah? 500,000, says 2 Samuel 24, 9, or 470,000, 1 Chronicles 21, 5. See that? God sent his prophet to threaten David with how many years of famine? 2 Samuel 24, 13, says 7. 1 Chronicles 21, 12, says 3. How old was Ahaziah when he began to rule over Jerusalem? 2 Kings 8, 26 is 22. 2 Chronicles 22, 2 is 42. You see all these like certain like contradictions, discrepancies, issues that are so very clear and obvious to anyone. God damn guys, look the Bible. Do, 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 so much literature in here. Look guys, this is the King James version. I got this for a penny by the way, pretty much. Cause the, the Christians give it away for free basically. Look. Here it says, all scripture is given by, is, is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for, doc, for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Oh, look at that guys, look there, that sticker. Well, why would God create imperfect beings then punish them for not being perfect? Isn't that a bit silly guys? And look, all this text here guys, it's quite a deep read. There's so much in here that's so hard to like, interpret but i read it all two times over oh damn guys look at this guys all that that looks at the bible with a solid eye and sees things as they are and it isn't just like being blinded by ignorance which is what is happening to most christians out there they're blinded by ignorance they're not able or willing to see beyond their own personal like biases how old was Jehoiachin when he became king of Jerusalem? 2 Kings 24, 8 says 18. 2 Chronicles 36, 9 says 8. You see, yo, there's websites, guys, that you can go on free of charge and all the nitty gritty contradictions that you want to know about, learn about. Because honestly, it would be, fuck it, it would take all day for me if I was to like meticulously open the Bible up and just take you through all the contradictions verbatim through my mouth articulating it to you that would be such a massive waste of time because you probably would lose interest that's why you know most christians they don't even read the bible because their attention span is so small most of them are so ignorant and like not really even literate at all they just they, they pretty much just fucking what they do is they just take everything word of mouth by their from their preachers or from their Whoever else was educating them when they were younger, but maybe by their parents, they don't even do any careful studying of the Bible on their own deep analysis. Because if you do dig deep into the Bible, you wouldn't even be a Christian because you'd come across all these like weird things, these contradictions, these messed up like discrepancies and issues that the Bible has. And you would completely forfeit your belief in uh, in Christianity if you if you honest if you were super duper honest and intellectual and a careful studier studier reader of the bible you wouldn't be a christian anymore and look at someone like bart d ehrman he you know he used to be a former christian but he became a scholar and he started to look into the bible very very deeply and he forfeited his faith because he wanted he came to learn about and he came to know and understand that the bible actually is just a bunch of nonsense it's got various different sorts of discrepancies contradictions issues that can't really be reconciled and really guys i'm just going to take you through oh damn guys you can see here the holy bible guys so deep can't even, like, oh, look at all that in here, guys. It's so deep, guys. There's so much bloodshedding, atrocities. I can't even fathom, guys. And oh, look, Jehovah sends a worldwide flood to mass exterminate all life on Earth. Oh, look. 
Sodom and Gomorrah, Jehovah throws hot rocks at entire inhabitants of cities. And oh look, there's like bloodshedding and genocide. Oh look, there's so much bloodshedding. Oh my God, there's like so much bloodshedding, guys. It's so freaking mad. Oh, oh look, he sends worldwide flood. Oh look, he sends bears to kill small children. Oh look, more bloodshedding and genocide. Oh damn, there's so much bloodshedding in here. It's so unbelievable, guys. Oh my God. It's all over here, man. So much bloodshedding, genocide, atrocities. Or more contradictions again. Literally, there's a website called 101 Contradictions in the Bible. And it just goes through all of the contradictions that you might be interested in looking at. You know, AR, uh, see, how long did he rule? Okay, so number six, how old was Jehoiachin when he became king of Jerusalem? 18, sec says 2 Kings 24, 8. And 8 says 2 Chronicles 36, 9. You can't have both of them. How long did he rule over Jerusalem? Three months, says 2 Kings 24, 8. Three months and 10 days, says 2 Chronicles 36, 9. The chief of the mighty men of David lifted up his spear and killed how many men at one time? 800, says 2 Samuel 23, 8. Or 300, says I Chronicles 11, 11. When did David bring the Ark of the Covenant to Jerusalem before defeating the Philistines or after? After, says 2 Samuel 5 and 6. Before, says Chronicles 13 and 14. You can see, guys, these sorts of contradictions. It's like, there's a certain bit of information, but it, it says something completely different to another bit of information in the Bible. Bro, the Bible just blows my mind how people can just gloss over all of these like contradictions and issues that the Bible has. Bro, that's so dumb. That's so, so stupid that people don't even look carefully into like something as serious as like religion. Like honestly, you, would, would you, you wouldn't want to take religion at face value, but that's what so many people do. They take religion at face value. Christians, maybe perhaps Muslims, or Jews as well. They take it all at face value. They don't look deeply into these like fucking religions and look at the, the Holy Scriptures properly. Because you see all these fucking issues, contradictions, also, it's not just that, there's also fucking like genocide, homicide, slavery, infanticide in the Bible as well. The Bible actually, certain parts of the Bible might even like support like institutions like slavery as well. All these issues. When did David bring the Ark of the Covenant? He already covered that. How many pairs of clean animals did God tell Noah to take in? God damn, guys. Look at all this in here, guys. There's so much messed up stuff in here, guys. Oh my God, look, the Bible got it right here, guys. And look, I'm just like, Reading, breezing through it. Oh my God, oh, there's so much bloodshedding, guys. So many contradictions in here. Why does Jesus have two different genealogies? Why are there different accounts, statistics, and pieces of information regarding different events in here? Why is there so much bad stuff in here? So many contradictions, not enough coherency. It's all a bunch of, ooh, so weird. What's it all? Why is there so much bad stuff in here, man? It's so weird, guys. So much woo, -woo. so much genocide, bloodshed, especially the Old Testament. Oh, what the hell? Oh, Isaiah 45, 7, God to the ark. 2 says Genesis 6, 19, 20. No, actually, 7 says Genesis 7, 2. But despite this last instruction, only two pairs went into the ark, says Genesis 7, 8, 9. You see, guys, it's all a bunch of dog shit. All these issues, bro, there's a website called 101 Contradictions in the Bible. You can just go on that. It's all there, it's free of charge. You don't have to put money into this. You can just go and see and look through all the fucking contradictions that the Bible has blows my mind that Christians, that certain people that identify as Christian Jews, they take all of this at face value. They don't really even carefully contemplate on this, that the Bible has all these issues. It's all so funny to me, but eh, God damn, the contradictions just are endless, man. Oh, I'll, I'll, do, I'll do you one last one. 101, when Jesus walked on water, how did the disciples respond? They worshiped him saying, truly you are the son of God, says Matthew 14, 33. They were, true, they were utterly astounded for they did not understand about the loaves, but their hearts were hardened, Mark, says Mark 6, 51, 52. Guys, the Bible has contradictions, but most of you are probably gonna remain ignorant, so fair enough. If you wanna just ignore everything I said in this video and continue being ignorant, hopefully I do get through to a couple of you here that watch my videos 
And you now learned a thing or two about the Bible and how it's all a bunch of, so, sort of is a bunch of nonsense and that the Bible has a load of problems, certainly contradictions, and there's also moral issues like slavery and genocide that the biblical God like, advocates for and sanctions, as is the case in like when he tells the Israelites to obliterate the Amalekites and kill their women and children, but I don't want to get too much into that. Food for thought, hopefully you do contemplate on everything I said in this video. Take care, guys. Look at this, guys. So much pages here, guys. A lot of it is just about how God is like punishing mankind. He created imperfect beings and then punishes them for not being perfect. Oh, look, Sodom and Gomorrah, genocide, bloodshed, all here, guys. All found within the doc within the contents of this Bible thingy here that I got in my hands. Oh, look, the Holy Bible. Oh, look, King James Version. Oh, look, the backside of it. Oh, look. Oh, damn, guys. So much horrifically insane things found within here so much bloodshedding atrocities crime it's quite unbelievable indeed all within the folds of this bible god damn look at this guys you got the presented portion look the old testament has like approximately one two three four five six seven eight nine. i don't even want to bother counting but look at that it's all here isn't it